No. Let's go have a let's go chew the fat. Yeah. Mate, this is a pretty iconic table. This is where we first met. This with, is the uh, with Pow. Dave Pow to Ben table. I've lost, I've lost three and a half kilos. Since last week. Since, but I tell you when I started it. So Monday. So yep. no beer, no wine. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Eat a good meal, good family Joe usually in the morning, and then I have a good feed in the afternoon and don't really eat anything in the middle, and no snacking. And I've lost, I think last night after F45, I was 97.7. Target's 95. Lots of long blacks. Ice long black. Yeah, no milk. Fuck the milk off. And I watched Game Changers again. Have you seen Game Changers? Yep. There's a bit of a... Um, a lot of people think just dis dismissing it because obviously the other marketing, the Dairy Council and all that are popping it with their theories. But as I said, you got to make up your own opinion. Mm. You know, no one's force feeding your fucking avocado. <laughs> or a cucumber or a zucchini. But they are getting force fed subconsciously meat, dairy, eggs, and all that shit that goes with it. Don't fight it. Just stand back and observe. And try it yourself. And for blokes, if you go on a plant based diet, as the urologist guy says, Look, again, like Mason, uh, you were more erect after the plant-based diet than the meat-based diet. Okay, how about how often you had erections? Oh. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> what is today? So Alex Ferguson, he's from where I'm from in Glasgow. But he's... What did he do? Uh, man manager of Manchester United, so the most successful manager of any sporting team in the world. And they've actually done something, I think it was, a, was it one of those big fancy um, places in America, is it Yale or Harvard? Yeah, Harvard. They've actually got him as part of so they've given him an honorary fucking doctor or something. Really? Because he's pure dead brilliant. But the, um, he's just the most successful guy of any sporting uh, code in the world. But he's a working class guy who used to work in the shipyards, similar to Billy Connolly. He used to run a pub and manage my football team. Did he manage Rangers? He managed Rangers, he managed Rangers, Aberdeen, he made them really successful. But just a guy who gets on with the grind. You know, there's not a lot of niceties in people that are humanly good, and he's humanly good, but he's gonna fucking, he's gonna drive you hard if you're a And uh, that's, a, that's, a, that's a nice trait about being Scottish. You can sniff a really bad. And I know people won't like that word. It's offensive, it's not offensive, it's the word that's in the dictionary. Biggest learning experience. Doctors don't have all the answers. And I'll give you an example of that. When I moved to London, I think I was 18, left Glasgow. Lots of mates in Glasgow. Uh, very familiar, very happy place when I lived there, but I had to get away from it. Went to London and I got very lonely. And I'm not a fucking lonely person. But being in a big city, not knowing anyone, and it was dark, it was winter, I went in December time, or November time. I went to the doctor, and I went to this doctor, I said, I said to the doctor, I don't feel how I normally feel, I don't feel really happy. And her response to me was this, she said to me, are you suicidal? Now, I never knew that was an option until that point. That, that word had never crossed my mind. I thought, sorry? She said, are you suicidal? I went, no. She said, well, you'll be fine, off you go. And I thought, I, bet I walked out more suicidal. I walked out suicidal than before. I was like, hang on, I am a? Does she know something I don't know? It's like, I was never, that, that level was never in my mind. That was the biggest learning for me is that all they wanted to do was give me a tablet, find the prescription, here you go, quick, get the What they could have done was said to be, find more purpose in your life. You move to a new environment, find a connection, exercise more, go and read some books, go and do some self-help, do some yoga. There's a whole range of stuff that I should have been taking responsibility for that she should have fucking told me. But yet her great medical career should just be, are you suicidal? Do you need some tablets? I want a fucking tablet. And I want a fucking tablet. I want to learn. And that was it. That stuck with me since, since that day. And I tell that story to everyone because I thought, that was never an option for me. And it's, that, that is never an option in my mind. You get one chance of life and it's not your responsibility to fucking take it. 
unless you get some fucking deadly disease. Too many people are fighting for life. Never, ever, ever fucking throw your life away, ever. But that was the biggest learning for me. It's like, wow, well, normally doctors have the answer, but this time she did have the answer. Crap, I tell you this, all these numbers and all these figures that you're earning, they're not for your benefit, they're for the school's benefit. Because they can then go tell, oh, we're one of the highest schools in the, in the state, you know, we're one of the best. Send your children here, we'll fucking torture them. Don't do that to your kids. Let your kids grow. Pressure's a wonderful thing, but don't let it be fucking put on you by someone else. If you want to do well in school, then you fucking do it. But you make the choice yourself. Don't feel the pressure from your parents, or your fucking peers, or your mates at school, because it's all bullshit. In fucking five years time, it won't matter a fuck. In 10 years time, it definitely won't matter a fuck. And in 15 years time, you would have fucking forgotten all about it. So it's just, this pressure, you gotta do this. No, you don't, unless you choose to. You don't all have to fucking walk that path. I never did. Fuck that, imagine sitting that long, reading books that you don't want to fucking read. Talking about Pythagoras or fucking algorithms. Fuck off. Fuck off, man. I just don't buy any of that shit. And if anyone listens to this, what I'm saying, and connect with it, tell other people because they need to know that it's not just going away. You may upset a few people along the way, but it's alright to upset them if you're finding yourself. You know, it's like, don't fucking make other people happy just so you can feel a little bit worse about yourself. Uh, do, do people always get to a certain age and say, oh, don't judge me, don't judge me. But your entire schooling system is judging you. They're basing you on your fucking scores. I don't give a fuck about that stuff. I just don't. I give a fuck about people. Communication. So if you live your life in here every day, you're gonna find comfort, happiness, sadness, anxiety, depression, whatever. So I'm gonna exist in here. But one day when you wake up, you might have went to a seminar. You might have been inspired by someone. You might have watched my podcast and think, fuck, I'm gonna have a crack. But to do more means you've got to change this cycle of how you live your life. And by doing that means you've got to expand how you live. You see how everything separates? Every time something separates and moves in your mind, you become fearful, you become afraid, because your mind wants you to be safe. It wants you to stay where you are, because that's what it knows. It's up to you to take control of that mind and start making this normal. And the more you push, the more you, the more you fear. I read a book once that was called Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway. I just think people need to know that don't be fear of these new thoughts running through your mind. They're very normal. We all have them. We might not talk about them, but we all have them. So the more you push this, your, your safety net every day, the less you're going to fear in life, you know? And that's a very simple analogy. I went through it. He's gone through it. We're all going through it, and I'm still going through it. Mate. Fuck it, you done it in my car. Holy. Look at this. Driving 110 on the highway, why? 110 happened? on the highway from Mullum to Byram. And she went, anyway, I'm going to go to the car yard and I'm going to ask him if he can repair it. <laughs> Just for a piss take to see what it says. I mean, absolutely no. <laughs> you can't repair that? No, I can sell you one. <laughs> <laughs> what caused it? Uh, did you drive on it while oh, it, it was flat? On the freeway. It happened on the freeway. It blew out and then... It blew out. Yeah, so if there was a bulge or some kind of puncture in there and then it's blown out and then you've kept driving on it, then it's... Yeah. I'll make it one of them. Thank you. Just came back from Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam, playing soccer, won another trophy. <laughs> Tell us, how congested is Australia compared to Vietnam? It's a different type of congestion. Give, give, me, give it to me in body shapes. How many body shapes amongst you? Show them the picture. Well, there's no, um, there's no personal space in Vietnam. And, uh, they, they don't mind walking and rubbing shoulders. Not for Danke. Mm. There you go, you learn something new. Review. Green changer, plant based, vegan, tasty. Satisfying. Mmm. Mate, is that that's growing down there? Mmm. <laughs> Mate, I see a little bit of an increase down there. Alright, sorry. If anybody saw a game changer, you know what's happening. <laughs> Mercury rising. <laughs> for, all the, Sally. for all the men struggling out there looking for a pickup line, how to pick up their wife. Mate, what do you do? 
I got George to go and ask her. <laughs> <We're darling. laughs> I was working in a nightclub and um, saw Sally come in. Saw this little bum just wobbling past me. And I saw her in the cloakroom because she was working there. And I was talking to we were doing security. And I was with, her, with this other guy, Mohammed. And he was about to put the beat on, put the move in. And I just went straight in there. And I know Scottish accent's great when you're not in Scotland. So in any other place you can just really use it to your advantage. And I walked straight up to her and I just said, hello, one of me and you are going to have some babies. And then she started giggling. I thought, that's it. I'm done. And then that night, I took her out for a Chinese. She told me she was half Chinese. I took her for a Chinese curry. At like five in the morning in Leicester Square. Because I worked in a nightclub, so it was like, finished work at four. What and happened after the curry? She got sick. Oh. So I tried to, uh, it was like a scene. We're walking down to Worcester Falga Square. I was kind of nudging to try and get a hold of me and she left me in the rain, jumped in, it was like a scene from a movie. I had the umbrella, she jumped in a black cab and fucked off. I think people overthink these things, you just got to go in there and get it. What I said to Dylan was, she, she, she's after a bit of bobe and I'm after a bit of vagina, that's it. It's, like, it's a very human thing. People will say, oh, you know, people say, oh, you're punching above your weight or she's out your league, whatever. Fuck that, be in your own league. You know what I mean? Run your own race. If she doesn't like you, she's going to tell you to piss off. And you can accept it, or you can keep working her down. Keep going back, keep going back. Don't give up. Don't be put off by your mates telling you, oh, you can't do that. Oh, oh, she's this. Fuck that. They can't do it. What they're telling you is they can't do it. So they probably think you can't do it. And what you can show them is how it can be done. It makes some babies. A lot of babies. A lot of practice first though. Yeah, practice. Practice makes perfect. He's got a conspiracy. He thinks your husband's a dentist. No, no. That's why he's selling candy. Not a dentist. <laughs> this is the Mullen Bimby Lolly Shop. It's a little hidden gem of 2482. Only for the locals. And she is Mrs. Claus. Mrs. Claus. Santa's through the back. Even in Mullen, the vegan lucky dip bag. No kid goes with that. That's right. Here. Moonballs. I have one. I have one for me. And maybe Dylan will have one. Mm -hmm. I'll keep the rest of the kids. Oh, that is oh. I'm good. Bye -bye. Nice to see you guys. See Thank ya. you. See you later. You're on a health diet and you bought quickly I fell off the wagon. Chocolate. I bought these for the kids now I'm a second one. I bought these for my kids and I'm already two in. I've got an addiction. What's going on here? This is what Farmer Joe. White chocolate and cranberry honey granola for Christmas every year. Look at that. This is pretty. Isn't that just a fucking Aussie Christmas? Look at it. Those big white chunks of chocolate. Mm. You're going to dance on your taste buds. You're going to feel really bad and really naughty after you've eaten it. Why are you not getting fucking big? I said, I'm not going to the gym to get big. I said, here, let me give you the best life lesson you're going to get. I said, by me going to the gym every day and being resilient and disciplined to do something I love for me, that helps my mind grow, which then helps me grow. And if my body shape changes as a byproduct of that, then that's a benefit, but it's not a goal. He goes, oh, can you say that again? Because that was good about no. I must say that again, that was enough. <laughs> Shaka's to end it, you gotta do double shaka to end it. You. We're gonna get Heidi on the podcast next Tuesday, or Wednesday, in the, in the Chevy. And we're gonna find out what she does. Plant-based fresh uh, chef and crumb. Very posh Milo. You be right, mate. I always said to Sally, if I ever become an Aussie newsreader, I gotta get the wink properly after the guy's told the news, he goes, and that's all. On the seat of not you, you be right, mate. Back off. <laughs> <laughs>